Welcome to Pharma Drama, the channel where we look at the science of healthcare and healthcare products. In this, the third part of our interview with Dr. Bahija Ramey Abraham, Senior Lecturer in Pharmaceutics at King's College London, she's going to tell us all about how she uses social media in promoting science, and in particular, what drove her to set up her very successful podcast, Monday Science. So, if that sounds good to you, get yourself a drink and let's hear what she has to say. Academia gives you a lot of freedom, mm. and I think we've determined that that's probably a key thing for you, isn't it? That sort of um, freedom, as it is for me, in fact. Mm. So I know that you do a lot of things outside of your day-to-day -day academic life. Uh, one would be your excellent podcast, uh, Monday Science. So um, just tell us a little bit about how you use social media and the other initiatives that you run. Thank you for calling my podcast excellent as a former guest on the yes, podcast. that's right. Yes. Episode 90-something. Um, oh my gosh, you know the down. episode number. Yeah. That's really yeah. important. Well, no, when I was in the 90s. Oh, it was. It was 90 and 91, I think. Mm. <laughs> nice. <Okay>. Um, <laughs> so Monday Science, so I, I would say for me, as, you know, I enjoy science communication i enjoy public engagement something that i credit um mine um Olu mm -hmm. at ucl a colleague of mine yes a colleague at, at ucl so she when i joined ucl she um was building her research area in geriatric pharmaceutics and um, looking at how to improve medicines for older people, um, as well as looking at modeling, different things. And she had a public engagement workshop. And at the time, I was still practicing as a pharmacist and I was noticing pharmaceutical issues with certain things, one being the dosset boxes where you put your medicines in and they're repackaged from the manufacturing packaging. So I started writing some little, you know, thought pieces around it and spoke to Mine about it one day. On the way, we were in North Greenwich, actually, I just randomly remember that. On the way somewhere, probably to eat, knowing me. Um, and she kindly... Um, invited me to talk about this problem of um, dosset boxes and access for old medicines for older people um, at this public engagement workshop that she was hosting at UCL where she had collaborated with I think it was Age UK and had 60 or so uh, older people to come and We'll really talk to them about what we're like the challenges we've identified based on you know research and so forth. Talk to them about it and then get their thoughts. And I had never, I didn't know that was possible, you know. Um, and and I really credit Mine for, and I'm very lucky. That was like the first year of my postdoc, so just graduated, still f excited about everything and and all that. And she showed me how to integrate people the public into your research in a way that's meaningful for both of us it's, it's a two-way exchange um and then also the importance of communicating that to the scientific community as well as the um, wider community so I wanted to give that context because I, I really want to give Mina the credit for that because th that experience shaped how I understood how research should be it should be around communicating your knowledge to people, whereas if it's schools and, you know, so I've been speaking at schools for many years. I like giving presentations as well. Um, and so I've been passionate about communicating science or even careers and everything over the years. And then the pandemic came. But also two years before that, I talked, I thought about doing, starting a podcast and with a couple of people and we did some test episodes but we never published anything the pandemic comes and i started to get frustrated that there were two things that were frustrating me two things that happened sorry one the frustration that people with non infectious disease backgrounds or immuno immunology backgrounds whatever were talking so confidently about covid and there was a lot of misinformation mm. the second thing was that i got really ill with covid and it was scary. It was in April where no, very few people were getting COVID. I was really scared. I was ill over my birthday. I remember waking up on my birthday, just being grateful to be alive. And so I then 
made that decision on my birthday just as a I will always remember <laughs> to be grateful for life that I will stop sort of sitting in my comfort zone and I need to constantly I need to constantly push myself and sit out of my comfort zone and so I then was like what is something that I've been wanting to do for the last couple of years have a podcast mm. so I was like yeah I'm, I'm gonna do it and it's because there's a need I need to have a platform where people can trust and you know I've got the experts talking about what they need to talk about um and so because I'd already been thinking about it for like two years before I knew everything <laughs> like I knew what platform I was going to use this and the other the only thing I didn't know was the name and so I decided well if I want to try and challenge myself I want to try and be consistent but I'm not always consistent just if I with the podcast but then I'll give it a name that and makes me like forces me to have to do something weekly which at the time very intense fast forward four years later not really practical in everyday yeah. life <laughs> so I call the podcast Monday Science Monday is my favorite day of the week Thursday is my second favorite but Thursday Science doesn't quite have the ring to it yeah Monday Science sounds good yeah do you see mm. I like Monday's favorite day of the week and I love science. Like, that's one thing. But yeah. I don't just love You're my science. You're never going to get Bob Geldof on you to, uh, <laughs> to do a podcast, you think? No, not at all. Um, but I, I don't just love my science. I love science. Like, I can talk to anybody about different things, which is the thing. So I started the podcast and on in my bed because um, sitting up was difficult because I still had COVID. I had long COVID and all this stuff. And then I just reached out to people. There was, um, was uh, my first uh, interview, uh, what was this? Um, Popescu, Dr. Popescu. She's a, a zoologist and but, um, just an expert in all things to do with infectious diseases. And um, I sent her an email and I was like, could you come on the podcast? I'm very professional because I already have the templates. And that was the start. We couldn't record the video because the light was affecting my eyes. I had such a headache. Wow. I was pretty much in bed, mm. but it was an hour and a half recording. And the questions were answered about COVID from an expert. Mm. And that's how Monday Science started. It's been running for four years. Um, I've had to learn how to adapt to podcasting when we didn't have to be outside all the time to now and when there weren't that many podcasts out to when they've been lo them so many podcasts mm. um and then also if we go back to something i don't know if you include it but i i am not extroverted which i need to you know people come to me oh my gosh you're so different I'm like, i am tired a lot of the time and sometimes engaging with everybody can be very challenging and so Monday Science, which is a, a passion of mine, can also be very draining for me if I'm stressed with work, if I'm just not in the right headspace. So that's where there's not been consistency in trying to, and also I think we're still, regardless of if people want to admit it or not, we're still trying to understand how to navigate life post-pandemic, post-COVID, however you want to look at it. And so with the podcast, with it's, it's back again, <laughs> um, regular episodes, more structure on my end, I've done my own inner work, but also I'm, I've also adapted in my podcasting style as well. And now I'm not so rigid about where I record. I was in Greece a few months ago. I recorded an episode in Greece <laughs> because, do you know what? That's what I need to do right now. Yeah, Monday science on the road. Yeah, just wherever I can because that's the only way you're going to get the episodes. I, I'm sto I've stopped striving for perfection because it doesn't exist. Um, so that's the, the podcast. I also have social media presence on Instagram and TikTok at Dr. Bahija Raimi A. <laughs> Follow me, please. Um, but I I struggle with social media as well because I want to be authentic. I want to um, create content that people want, um, that people find useful. Um, and so I'm also mindful that what I might find useful, others might not. So it's taken me... I have... I'm. I'm very, with now I'm better with consistency, particularly with TikTok. But I had a video that went viral ages ago. I think it was like sometime last year or the year before about USB sticks, random. <laughs> um, and that was intense. I was getting all these comments 
and I was like no 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 that, that's I don't know if I want to be so there's a flip side to social media yeah there's a flip side um, but whereas now I'm, I'm doing better I've got a, a, a little community of other podcast um, sorry of other content creators which we all support each other which is really nice yourself included as well and um, now I'm really on a mission to add value based on my skills like add value with the skills and knowledge that I have so I'm creating more content it's 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 a different drive also with the podcast it's a different drive with my social media as well because we learn so much in our everyday lives doesn't matter whether you're an academic we just learn so much in our everyday lives and I think it's important for everybody to know that they are adding value in everything that they do yeah yeah. I'm not saying everyone needs to pick up a camera or pick up a mic and start recording, but never doubt yourself if you if you have the potential to add value. Sure, you know? I think that you said some really key things there. But the the Monday science thing and the not striving for perfection—that's I struggled with that at the start when I made videos for the YouTube channels. Everything yeah. had to be perfect, and I've realised it doesn't have to be perfect. No, <laughs> so that's okay. But I, I think it's also because, and I, I will say this just from our own backgrounds and experience there's such a expectation people have when you have a PhD you know you can say oh hi I have I, I don't even I don't bring it up in conference I'm not in a bar I'm like hi I have a PhD no I barely bring it up but if someone says what do you do and I'm like oh I'm a scientist or I'll say oh, you know something and then when you're like oh, PhD, oh you must be so sharp you're so intelligent I'm like ah oh, no like what is intelligence you know and I think there's a pressure that is placed on people who have PhDs particularly because I will explain from my experience where you feel that you have to be perfect you feel like you have to know everything and that seeps into different areas in one's life that seeps into even your passion projects there's there's no middle ground I mean you know I started a podcast did I have to no but I had COVID I was going for a moment and I'm like I will start a podcast it must be the best <laughs> you know whereas did I need to do it? I don't have any regrets by the way but I'm just saying like sometimes the way our mind works because we're very um being an academic I would say specific, specifically being an academic you are you have a lot of freedom creative freedom <laughs> you could just do whatever, whatever you like yeah you, you like so long reason. as it's scholarly so long as it's scholarly but that means that if you but because also if you if you have that freedom you also have that freedom to put the same level of focus and organization as you would with your research group for every single thing you do and i've learned when i talked about adaptability before i have learned that i need to be more adaptable to the different things i'm doing unless i will burn out i have to look after myself i can't be the best supervisor for my PhD researchers, if I'm like, where's the yeah, science exactly. episode? Do you see what I mean? So, yeah, so absolutely. yeah. So I, I, I love my podcast. I do like um, social media. I'm really fighting to not ask you questions. By the way, like I have to say, I'm twitching here. Like, uh, don't ask <laughs> any questions because it's not. I'm being interviewed. But um, we need to see you more on TikTok. You were on TikTok putting I was things on TikTok in for a bit. liquid I, nitrogen. Yeah, li uh, liquid nitrogen. Yeah, I was going to say to anyone watching this that. Um, yeah, your, your um, TikTok video is very interesting if someone wants to understand what it's like to be a researcher mm. or an academic, isn't it? You give um, you know, a, a daily snapshot of things that um, go on. It's um, super interesting. Thank you. Whereas the Monday Science podcast is much more an in-depth topic conversation with an expert, as yeah. you've already said. It's, and that's the beauty sign of, of social media, isn't it? Yeah. You can different channels have got a different ethos so for, yeah. for pharma drama in particular it's about young people and helping them get on in science by explaining science clearly and giving mm -hmm. them career advice mm -hmm. monday science is very much broadening knowledge but by listening to experts it's um 100 and it's also things that i randomly think of so like i was there's one episode where i was on the pl on the plane where was i going to i think i was going to atlanta and um the person that i was sitting next to um, their wife was like a ma marine biologist or something and I was like okay cool and then <laughs> we just started talking about food as per usual the food came and then he was saying oh do you know that the food tastes different like in the air because then that's why they have to tell it I was like what mind blown <laughs> so I, I created a whole episode on that I did a whole episode of because I've been watching a lot of true crime like a lot of people created an episode on that and then but those are episodes that I've been interested in and then I create the content. But 
for example, people I've interviewed, I started finding, you know, I don't know what my algorithm was saying on my phone, but I was getting a lot of um, adverts about um, avatar dating and metaverse dating. Random. <laughs> it was random. And I was like, I didn't know about this world. So I got an expert. I did a whole series about metaverse dating. I got an expert to talk about this. We talked about dating in the pandemic and after. You know, I, I love the fact that I get to meet and speak with mm. a wide... I've spoken to all sorts of people. Mm. Consumer neuroscience last week. Um, psychologists. AI experts. I speak to so many different people. And I think it... It makes, it humbles me in a good way. Mm. You know, when I think about my research, I think about it in, in, a, in a very different way. I think about what value am I adding? Um, but I'm also thinking about it in a, this is part of a bigger picture. And I think sometimes, just my last point of this, I think sometimes in academia, we kind of need to humble ourselves. You have to remember that, yes, you're amazing, in whatever you're doing but there are other people that are amazing and are really like contributing mm. to the world mm. and i i for my experience with monday science is i have such a respect for every single academic it doesn't have to just be a scientist every single person who is committed to being a researcher i have such respect for them because i've seen a range of what's possible and what people are doing and they're people that are making a massive difference uh, right, I think we're coming to the end, but before we finish and Pharma Drama leaves your office, what plans have you got for the future? Well, we've got our future plans, that yes, sounds we really weird, some, our collaborations. Yes, some collabs. We have collabs, collabs, collabs. Pharma Drama and Monday Science yes. coming to you soon. Yep. This is our teaser. Yep, this is the teaser. More to come. Um, I So in terms of things that I want to talk about, do you know what, I'm going to, because you know, you can't predict the future i have plans and things in place but unfortunately i can't really share them now because they are in the i need people to give me money to do them phase, yeah, okay. yeah, that's good phase. <laughs> um but i would say that things that i know i can commit to doing in the following months the rest of the year is being consistent with monday science episodes yeah, that's monday science. so please just listen look to out our that. episodes yeah. look, out to that. look out for that consistent with social media posting mainly on tiktok mm -hmm. I don't know why I seem to prefer TikTok. I feel everyone sees me on Instagram, but it's very easy to upload material. Yeah, it's just a very it's an easier interface. So please follow me on um, whatever social media platform you prefer. But I can say on TikTok, which is at Doctor. What does I say, Doctor Behija? Write me a. Where's it, Doctor? Yeah, Doctor Behija. Write me a. I should know my own tag. That's where I'm going to be more consistent with talking about academia different aspects of academia things that i've been recently given advice about scientific conferences and posters and stuff like that um with my research we've got some exciting research coming out we've had a year and a bit of quiet um because there's been a lot of work going on behind the scenes getting paper getting data together for papers we recently published a paper in um acs applied materials and interfaces about a non-animal based liver model so it's very exciting and so there's more to come with the research um but i i think i, I can't really say something specific but i'm just saying that i'm very excited about the things i'm very proud of the work that my phd researchers do um, because you see me sitting here hello hi on pharma drama but there's a team behind me and i think there's also a team for monday science and my startup scientifically speaking which we'll talk about another that'll come on another time to talk about that um but i have a team behind me and i'm very lucky and grateful that i'm in that position so there are lots of things coming up but I can't remember all of them to share now. Mm -hmm. But also, there's some things that I can't share yet. So, yeah, well, watch this space. Yeah, exactly. Watch that's exactly what I should, I should have just said that. Space. I should yeah. have just said, watch this space. That sounds more, um, you know, yeah, not secretive, nah. elusive. Nah, it sounds good. I should watch this space. Yeah.